Hello, I'd already drained my fuel out of my Devco 382 fuel filter. And I said, well, hell, maybe somebody else wants to know this. But up under here, you got just a little turn valve. I turned it and drained it into a pop bottle with a little funnel. I get it down about a quarter to a half inch lower than the top of this ring. Drain it down to there. And then I take, shut it off, be sure it's not leaking. Fully shut off. And I just use, there's several different kinds, but I just use a fuel filter wrench just to crack it loose. And you got to put it on there. It's on there pretty good. But that wrench will help put it all the way around and just turn it. A little bit of pressure there. Just do it one step at a time. Don't be sure it's all the way down on there so you don't strip these plastic little bumps up that fit in all these notches. I guess it's kind of like a, uh, I don't know, 20 something point socket fit in each one of them. Just be sure it fits it snug and just tur keep turning it until it gets starts to get just a little bit loose. Then I grab the top here, put it on there and just, just turn it easy. Don't force it. I've already had a couple of these were broke before I got the truck a long time ago. And just take it easy on her. You don't want to break no more. Not an expensive top, but I think I can make that one last the life of the truck. If I just take care of it. And just work it loose. Just work it around. Now it gets hand loose. Take it out. Got a little O-ring inside here. On the top, take that old ring out. It fits down right against the the top cap, and that's just what seals it airtight, so it won't suck air in there. Always replace that when you do your oil filter. So take it off. Got me a new one here, and I'll just leave it sticking loose on there, just so I know to put it on. Set that to the side for now. Continue taking this the big nut off just plastic old plastic just go easy with her just turn her slow just turn it slow but it'll come right up after a few turns you to get hand loose i like to just put my hand on top there is a spring in there not a lot of pressure but i just don't want to drop it and it bounce across the ground so i'll spin it until it's loose out riding a Harley oh, and the filter fell anyway but anyway I still got the housing and I like to pop just the the ring off I'll set it right over here and make sure and take this this seal off mine uses the large round ring I have another one here let me grab it It gave me a choice, so probably for a different type housing, I've got a flat band ring, but then I got the big round ring. I use the round ring with this 782 uh, Fuel Pro accessory. I really like this. My truck does not have a second fuel filter just like a regular solid canister, similar to an oil filter. Mine just has this one, and I really like it. Because I can, every time I get under the hood, every time I put fuel in it, every time I'm loading, every time I'm unloading, I like to visually keep checking everything on my truck, be sure everything's running right, and at a glance I can see it. Now my, this is a little bit, a little bit foggy, it's a little bit old, but I, I'll take a rag and wipe the inside out, and it'll help it get a little bit cleaner. I just hang on to these flat washers or gaskets for any reason I might come up in the future I might need one but I'll just take and install a new one on here right around that edge there we go eh, doing it one handed a little bit of a pain but didn't want to mess my shorts up trying to pinch that one between my knees but that'll work there I'm gonna take a, a rag and wipe this here clean but I'm gonna install the new filter uh, got my old one it did fall off but the center rubber gasket a lot of people i have known people that have forgotten this i almost did one time myself this rubber little adapter that fits in here it came out so i have to go in here and 
I like to twist it just a little bit and then pull it off. That's it. And that normally, let's see, usually goes just like that. Normally that's inside this filter here. That's just so you have a good airtight seal here that won't, um, it won't suck any air or raw fuel into it without passing through the filter. That way it has to be filtered. And it fits real, on mine it's a little bit tighter here than some I've seen. But that just tells me any fuel running in this motor has to pass through this filter before it um, continues on into the, the fuel pump and the fuel rails. And um, as long as I know it's passing through here, it's doing good. Now mine was filled up close to four here. A uh, lot of perforated holes, but when it um, when it gets up here near the top, you still got some holes up here and a little bit higher. But anytime I make an oil change, if I'm up above five, I just go ahead and replace it. I'm just saving myself time down the road when it feels like there's a loss of power and it's in the motor starving for fuel. And being I was changing the oil today, I was up to about the bottom of the four. I got one or two holes with a little bit lighter color that's not dirty and the element inside. And it was about just just above the very bottom of the number four. Anytime they anything above five, I just go ahead and replace them. Yeah, I think buying them in volume, I think I'm paying, I think a six pack at a time or maybe a 12 pack at a time. I'm not sure, I have to go back and look. But I can buy these online, Fleet Guard. Uh, I've had good luck with them. Some people don't like them. Some people are particular to one brand or another. But I do find most any brand bought in volume will save 15 to as much as 35% the cost of having to buy just one of these at a truck stop. Sometimes buying six of them, every now and then I find a good deal and I can get them up to 40% 40 40 off just buying them in volume. And, um, I'm usually changing one about every other oil change. You know, approximately... 18 to 20,000 miles. Now me, most people will go 15 on the oil. I know my motor's old. Uh, the oil gets a little dark early, being this EGR. And if I'm headed home and I think the oil's too dark, after eight and 9,000 miles, you know, it's just me. But with this old motor, I go ahead and dump the oil. But while I'm in here, I do this fuel filter and let me grab the new one. And basically goes on the exact same way, the exact opposite, the way that one came off. I already have my new one. It's got the rubber seal that fits down here on the bottom. Yep, it's in there. It will come out. And a lot of times, just like it did when I pulled it off, it will stay on here. I know people that have actually had to force this thing down on there and actually installed it. And it was still run, but it wasn't filtering the fuel like it was supposed to. The two got pinched together. I think one of them folded. His level never got higher than about seven, seven and a half. But fuel was leaking between them, not getting filtered, and going to his motor. And me, no, I want to ensure that it's getting filtered good. So I just put that on there and I just spin it with a little about five pounds of pressure pushing down a few times until i know it's seated good nice and straight i just leave it sitting there now i take my uh my lid with this rubber gasket i'm going to grab a rag i just want to wipe the inside of it real good i don't like to use chemicals i tried using brake parts cleaner a long time ago that's what caused this to fog up but i've got most of the fogging out of it it yellows over time because this was more clear when it was new and as it's yellowed from diesel over you know 1.2 million miles it has discolored I do believe I believe this is an original I do not think this is aftermarket a lot of aftermarkets are a lot clearer have a little bit different shape down here at the bottom not quite as thick as this I really believe this is original but I'm going to take care of the one I got. There's no reason, if I rebuild the motor, I think I can get another million miles out of that. That's a very good fuel filter system. And uh, I wouldn't trade it for anything. If somebody gave me a better one, I wouldn't take it. This one works very good for me. I 
lot of them do have mounted just inside the frame an additional one that screws on like an oil filter but mine does not have that uh i know a few people when i first got the truck they come over to show me where it was and they got under here and nope it sure don't now i like to take my spring out in here and i'm gonna take my rag i just like to wipe anything any sometimes a little bit of uh junk at the fuel filter might be there specks of just any kind of dirt and i just like to give it a pull it back inside out i just like to take a clean shop towel and really wipe the inside of it up just in case i will pull down the take the rubber seal off just so i can go around this lip one time right there where it seats against the housing and meshes that rubber gasket I'll do that, and I also like to get this upper edge, hit it one time, and that's where the plastic ring nut goes back down on it. Okay, let's spin that on around. Whoop, got a little bit of gunk right there. There we go. Whoop, a little bit right there. But yeah, basically just showed a little love, take care of it, and uh, Get my spring back inside there. Let's see. Get back on there, baby. Oh, yeah. There we go. Put it in there, mash it a few times. Yep. Got the spring down inside here. Uh, right inside this hole, that's that, that's that spring. That's what mashes inside this recess on top of the filter. And it adds a little bit of pressure to it, keeping it pushed down on that rubber gasket on the bottom. Keeps everything going just like it should. We'll slip it back on there. Whoop. Put our gasket on. Then put it back on there. And then put our ring nut back on. In fact, we'll go ahead and just set this on here. There we go. And that's where it's holding it up about a half inch. That's where that spring is sitting down in the that recess in the top of the filter. And we'll take and wipe a little bit of gunk out the inside of here. I just I've seen some of the aftermarket replacement ring nuts you can get looking at the marks on here like I say this was a used truck when I got it several years back I do believe this is the original one it's got a few marks on it but fortunately nobody has really cranked on it and cracked it or stripped any of the nuts and bolts off or the threads off and um, let's see a oh, little bit right there. I know somebody at a truck stop, a mechanic or something, would probably jump on this and have it done in about one minute. I don't know, charge you 40, 50 bucks for changing it. And uh, But I'm here doing an oil change anyway. Should have showed some of that. But it was a chance of rain this morning. I just wanted to hurry up and get it done. Just set the ring down, even all the way, and just turn it, just... Just spin it. Don't push it down. Just spin it until it grabs. Oh, there it goes. It grabs some threads. Uh, not forcing it all. Just spin it. Let it do its thing while pushing it down. Oh, there it goes. I'll just spin it. Getting a little catchy now. Yep. Still spinning nice and free. No cross thread. I'm just going to turn it a little bit. Oh, I feel that little starting to pull down on that little rubber gasket a little bit. Oh, not, not quite there. Nope, still got about a quarter inch to go. Oh, now it's catching. Wow. Nope, not quite. But it is a good snug fit, but it's not cross through it. There we go. Turn it. The whole housing's turning, but that's okay. I can still see numbers in here. A little foggy, but good enough. Because anytime I, if any time I see it above four where it doesn't have as many holes through this about one inch section and it does have more at the top it's I guess to accelerate the fuel rise into here to let you know it's time to change but if I see it up within a row or two of the holes right here that's, that's it for me I'm changing it all it takes is bad gas one time and 100 miles it'll be up to the top and then you're the next thing from losing a little bit of power for the motor being starved for fuel. And now I don't want that. I want, I want her to run the way she was designed to run. And if all I got to do is replace a filter, I'm guessing $13, $15. We'll just change her. 
keep her running the way she was designed to. Got her snug, put her wrench back on, and just turn it easy. Get a little snug. We'll turn it a little bit more. Let's get a little crank on it just a little bit. There we go. Getting a little squeak to it when it's turning. It looks like I'm pushing a lot. I'm really just trying to feel how much pressure I'm turning it. Trying to keep this seated level all the way around. Getting a little snugger there. Let's try one more. Whoop. Keep it level. Now push this straight on. There we go. Now this last bump or two. Yeah, I had to get on it a little bit. But that was it. That was it. Now I only lowered my level. I was draining it. I threw a little petcock at the bottom and I let it drain down and when it got level I just go one two three four five and I shut it off so I know my levels probably about halfway down this ring it was real close to the top when I had it off and as long as I don't get down below these two holes these two lines here inlet and outlet right here on the side as long as I don't get below it no air gets into the system and I'm able to Get in there, turn it over, and she should fire right up. Let's see. Put the cap back on it now. If I, if it would have gotten down a little lower, <coughs> excuse me, I would have uh, took clean diesel, poured it through the hole in the top, and if I ever drained it down too low to where you could see it bubbling air, I would always fill this thing up probably to about somewhere between number four and number three up higher so the moment I start turning over it's gonna try to get it to you know fuel to the motor as soon as possible and if it did bubble and I knew I got some air in it I would reach over there and hold the gas pedal down some while I turned the key and I'd hold it probably about three quarters or even full while I'm turning it over until it fires up and revs up the first time I'd let it rev to about 1500 and then I would just, I, I have always just patted the gas and tried to keep it between 1,000 and 1,500 RPM, 8, 10, a dozen times, and then let go of it. And as long as it don't fall behind below 700, which is what my truck idles at uh, when it's warmed up, um, I'm just going to watch it for a minute. And usually I'm going to see the level come up here probably somewhere between 8, maybe seven because mine typically will come just a hair above this ring and that's that's where it generally does each time after changing the fuel filter and then um keep an eye on it for any signs of leaks i'm really going to be watching all around this housing especially up underneath it the pet cock is closed and as long as that keeps up once i finish putting oil in it that will be the first thing i keep my eye on for the first i crank it up and let it run 10 15 minutes or at least enough to get the temperature up to about 125 30 degrees and then i'll back it up on a good known level spot in my yard and then i'll check my oil for topping it off and i just bring it right up to the full mark i don't overfill them and uh, that will pretty much conclude my oil change um i just had a last time i was home i went around and greased everything i was fixing to I checked my notes and I had just done it two weeks ago and I have not driven far. I haven't gone 2,000 miles. So I decided all I was really going to grease is just my fifth wheel this time and take the grease gun with me. Uh, just got a few other places in the front end. Um, a few, Just a few other grease fittings. I, I like to keep this front end grease good though. I just had king pins put in last year and usually about every oil, oil change. Uh, nine ten thousand miles or as close to that as when i come home sometimes it can vary from eight to twelve but uh 15 this truck has never seen fifteen thousand miles between oil changes with me it uh egr it gets a little bit dark i just change it when i get home i think it's good insurance and you know it might be an old truck but she runs good i'll try my best to take care of her we're going to add a little bit more oil to it and then we're going to fire it up and we're going to be looking for this fuel level and looking for any leaks 
Uh, maybe that might have helped somebody. I hope so. All right, thanks.